In life, for some of us, there comes a moment of realization when we acknowledge our mistakes. It's more than just a mental acknowledgement. It's a physiological experience that, that you feel. When we accept that our actions have not been optimal, our brain chemistry undergoes a pretty major shift. The release of neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin may decrease, leading to feelings of discomfort and ease and general horribleness. From a neurochemical perspective, accepting our wrongs triggers a cascade of reactions in the brain. The amygdala, our emotional center, may signal stress responses, while the prefrontal cortex, responsible for decision making, works to process and learn from the experience. Being wrong feels wrong. It feels negative. And it, admitting you're wrong, that feels even worse. What if the thing that I realized I was wrong about was the safety of open conversations and recorded content. I believed that these exchanges were harmless until I realized the potential risks involved. After 300 hours of recording, I feel like I started to understand the subtleties of the risks associated with open dialogues in recorded format. The very nature of recording content means capturing moments permanently setting in stone words and expressions that might otherwise have evolved or been retracted in ongoing, more dynamic conversations. People change. The meanings of words change. This permanence can lead to unintended consequences. For example, statements made in the heat of the moment or under less informed circumstances can later emerge as sources of regret or misinterpretation. As these recordings are replayed, shared, and potentially taken out of context, the original intent can be lost, morphing into something entirely different in the public eye. On top of all of that, the digital amplification of these conversations can create echo chambers, where only similar opinions are echoed back, reinforcing and radicalizing views without exposure to counter-arguments. This phenomenon not only stifles our personal growth and societal progress, but can also polarize communities and degrade the quality of public discourse. I know this seems strange, but there's responsibility here and we have to talk about it. And the responsibility lies in recognizing the power and permanence of our recorded words it is important to create an environment where open dialogues are encouraged, but human conversation needs to be approached with mindfulness and a readiness to engage with varying perspectives as opposed to just listen to them and create a platform for them. Originally conceived Idiot Mystic was to chronicle my friends' personal and spiritual journeys, highlighting the significance of each human story, while underscoring the connectedness of all beings. This was supposed to shine a light on these universal threads woven through our disparate experiences, showing how every narrative, no matter how ridiculous or painful, was contributing to a larger understanding of life itself and where we came from. However, without explicitly stating this mission, the podcast inadvertently deviated from its path. The freedom of open conversation turned our dialogues into sprawling, unguided narratives. While guests relished the chance to share their thoughts for hours, and a sizable audience found solace in these discussions, the core message of connectivity and structured exploration was completely obscured. We wandered far from the intended path, allowing unchecked opinions and divergent thoughts to dominate. 
Even more than that, as the podcast grew, it became a haven for what I can only describe as fake spirituality. Self-proclaimed spiritual gurus and healers began to dominate sessions, making bold, irresponsible claims about enlightenment and healing. This not only misled our listeners, but also diluted the genuine spiritual insights I thought I was going to share with you. As an occasional facilitator of meditation, my role has always been to guide individuals toward clarity and inner peace, helping them navigate through the noise of life to find stillness and truth. Yet, here I was, doing the opposite in my own podcast. By not providing a clear anchor in our discussions, I allowed the space to be filled with clutter rather than clarity, akin to conducting a meditation session that opens the mind but fails to protect against chaotic or harmful influences. I know things are changing, but we're still going to that same special place together. I just wanted you to know what being wrong sounds like.